All right, the title of the message is PMCS. All right. Preventive maintenance checks and services. Now, y'all that have been in the military or been around the military, y'all can, I see the north and south, you kind of raise your hand, I get ideas. So, quite a few of you, all right, amen. So, preventive maintenance checks and services, basically, again, that's just simply, it's where you're looking for the little stuff so you don't have the big problems. Amen? And you got, you talk about the 10 manual and the 20 manual here. The 10 is for the operator's manual. And the 20 is for the mechanics to do other things. But there, it's preventive maintenance checks and services. And what you're doing is trying to make sure that you don't have a big headache later. Like check your oil or you might lose an engine. Right? Amen. Before you leave, you check your coolant level and your oil to make sure they're in the right levels in the operating range so that you don't have a devastating or a very catastrophic failure. And then you have during operations. Before, during, after. During, you watch your gauges. Unfortunately, most of them are idiot lights now. And when they come on, it's too late. So when that light comes on, it's too late. I promise you, in most cases, right? And then you have after. When you get done, you look to make sure. You know, because you have cold checks and you have hot checks. Amen? So it's pretty important. And being in the military, I could spend a lot of time talking about PMCS. How many of y'all seen this... Uh, this magazine, Preventive Maintenance Checks. <laughs> Amen. Glory. This magazine, the military, they got it monthly and it showed you the things. It was really neat. And uh, they would send us out to all the units and it was great reminders of little tricks or what you should do, you know. And uh, y'all remember Half Mast? This was depressing for me because when I looked at this, I remember when I was 18 years old, he looked the same. Now I look like him and he ain't changed. That ain't fair. <laughs> he hasn't changed. Half mass is still the grumpy old guy, but he's telling you, you know, you got the best equipment in the world, you need to maintain it. Right? But it not only does PMCS save time, it saves money, it saves equipment, it saves lives. It surely does. It saves lives. And then uh, what's nice is it's kind of like sermons. Sometimes you want to catch people's attention, okay? You don't change the message, but you change the method of the message so you get people's attention. And, and they pay attention. That's what you want, right? One, I like this one. This is pretty cool. <laughs> Having dirty terminals is like kissing your gal through a plate of glass. <laughs> now, who wants to do that? I don't see nobody carrying a plate of glass around and then put it between them and their wife when they kiss her, you know? That makes you think about keeping your battery terminals clean and going home and seeing your wife, right? But anyway, once in a while, we would even be reminded about our POVs. It's, it's important to check the coolant levels in the POV. So they even they even help you out with that. That's pretty cool. And I have to share this uh, about uh, operators' manuals. Um, short story, but uh, I mean, you know, we all have operators' manuals for our vehicles. Amen? And uh, Tammy and I, we bought a pair of jet skis because we want to be in the wind. And that was a, that was a way for us to still have that same similar type experience cruising along on the water at 40 mile an hour breeze in your face it's just you feel free those of you that experience it you know what i'm talking about so we went down to austin to, to round rock to pick these up and while we're waiting for the paperwork to finish they take us to the maintenance department to sell us the service package well i'm a mechanic by trade you know so i figure i can do this stuff myself and I had already downloaded the owner's manual online and already read the first 80 pages of the owner's manual. Okay? I had already read the first 80 pages. So as he's trying to explain things to me, I'm, I'm finishing the sentence. And he's like, wow, how, how, did, how did you know? You've owned one before. I said, no, I read the owner's manual last night. He's like, what? I said, well, I downloaded it. I've gotten to page 80 so far. And he's like, oh, okay. Well, he tried me on a couple more things and I answered it. I finished his sentences and finally goes, well, you, you, you want to buy the service packet. You're getting the service packet. I said, no, I'm going to do it myself. He's like, oh, you don't want to do that. And I still got this poker face on. And I said, well, you know, he says, have you ever done a jet ski? I said, no, I never did a motorhome. But when I owned one, I started fixing it. You know, when I, I'd never done aircraft, but when I bought one, I did it. You know, I never owned a houseboat, but when I bought one, I did that. And Tammy said, he'll handle it, you know. He goes, well, you don't understand. A jet ski is like, it's, it's really intimidating. And you need special tools. 
It's not like anything else you work on. And, and I said, well, it, it's, a lot of it will be in the owner's man. He goes, you, you can't even change the spark plugs without tearing it in half. Now, I have a poker face. Most of you all know you can't even tell <laughs> if I'm happy or with me. I can make you think I'm mad when I'm really happy and having a good time. And my poker, I lost it. And so I lost, I lost my power there. I lost the, because it was like, <laughs> you got to tear it in half to change the spark plug. I'm just, and he's, he knew he had me, so he moved in for the kill. You know, he's like, you, you really need this service packet. You know, yeah, it costs, but it's financed in. It's only like an extra $20 a month, and we'll do all that for you. Well, I got my composure back, and I said, you know, I'll, I'll still handle it. Special tools and a lift, no problem. You know, I'd rather do it myself. Yeah, yeah, and he just said, you know, I, so I knew I was going to have to buy some type of lift. And I was just like, and he was like, okay, now you, that, okay, you're on your own. I, I had some doubts. So when I got home with our jet skis, and because of my vision, I tried to be safe. And I knew that on Memorial Day, wasn't it? Memorial Day weekend, we bought them. I was like, I'm not going out right now. There's too many crazies out there, and I only see half of everything. I'm waiting until Monday after this is all over, Tuesday, whatever. So I got back on uh, uh, YouTube. Everybody YouTube, when you're trying to figure out how to, I had to YouTube how to get the air filter out of my truck, you know? Now I did a video with Ethan saying, what did you say? Uh, kid, only a kid. Uh, Any kid could do it. Amen. And he can do it now. But I had to use YouTube. So I'm sitting and watching YouTube, and he showed me how to do it. 15, 20 minutes later, I'm like, Timmy, I can do that. And the guy didn't need a lift. You just need an extra person. It's plastic. Well, another thing, I'll back up. The service manager told me they don't have the, the owner's manual. I said, it's no problem. I've already downloaded it. So, what do you buy without an owner's manual nowadays? It's crazy, isn't it? Well, I started getting the packet out, and I started going through it, and guess what it had? Even the service manager didn't know that the CDU he sold me came with an owner's manual. This is not one I downloaded. It's right there. And I started looking, and I said, man, it's exactly like what I read. So I turned to page 80. And when I got to page 98, it tells me how to split it in half. Hello? Service manager told me that, and I don't think he lied. Here's what I think. Our society has become to where we're so dependent on letting people do stuff that we just don't want to do. Amen. We have allowed people, we have become those people, that even though we have the capabilities with a little bit of effort, we'd rather just pay somebody else to do it for us. And, he, and I think he believed himself. I don't think, I don't think that, that he was lying to me purposely when I asked him, it's not in the owner's manual. I think he just didn't know it was in the owner's manual. There's something else in the owner's manual that none of them can answer for me. And that's where do you clamp off the hose when you have to tow in the water? But that's a whole other issue. I mean, their manager can't tell me how to do that. What he did say is, I really don't think it'll matter. Well, your manual says that if I don't do it, I can ruin my engine. So I'm kind of concerned about that. So anyway. <laughs> yeah, I can go on and on about PMCS before, or after, during... Weekly, quarterly, s quarterly, s uh, semi-annual, annual, biannual. Y'all, yep, before, during, and after. And we all understand that not checking your engine oil, you could lose an engine. Not checking your coolant, you could lose a coolant. And then you could lose an engine. Now, I want to see a show of hands. How many of y'all check your tire pressure daily? <laughs> Weekly. Well, I don't lie now. God's watching. God's watching. I got a couple. Monthly? About monthly. Yeah. <laughs> low, low tire pressure is one of the leading causes of tire failure in the country. And it results in thousands of injuries every year. 2017. National Highway. 11,000 injuries, 738 uh, fatalities caused to tire failure. Most of that being just because of low pressure. Now, it's nice because they've come up with this monitoring system. How many of y'all got those in your cars anyway? That's when I check mine now, I'll be honest. My little idiot light comes on, I go check it, and it's five pounds low, and I put some air in it. Amen. So, boom, 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 boom. All our vehicles come with an owner's manual. That's a long introduction. And all of us have an owner's manual. We have a spiritual owner's manual, and it has our PMCS in here. The preventive maintenance checks for you and me. Before, hello, before you do anything, consult the manual. Before you move on anything, you consult your operator's manual. 
during what you're doing for God or whatever, consult your owner's manual. After, weekly, monthly, quarterly, it don't matter. Continuously consult this manual. Amen? This is our owner's manual. And I'm believing that right now you're going to take PMCS home with you. Amen? Amen? Those of you that don't take notes, at least write these down. PMCS. Amen? Your spiritual PMCS. The first one is prayer. Prayer. Prayer is communicating with God. Just talking to God. It is like checking your oil level first and then as you're checking your, oil, your spiritual oil level, God fills it up for you. As you start to talk God... There is nobody in here that can't tell me. I know, honestly, if you, if you start to talk to God, you start feeling better. Amen. When you finally overcome that hurdle for those that have trouble talking to God, you start feeling better. Your oil level gets to full. Amen? Now the purposes of prayer, they're up there, okay? It's to worship God. For who He is. And to thank Him. For what He's done for us. Amen? That's just one of the purposes of prayer. To cultivate a personal relationship with Him. You can't build a relationship without prayer. Listen to me. Prayer is communication. And you two can't have a relationship if you don't talk. You and I can't have a relationship as a brother and sister in Christ if we don't talk. You must communicate with God. Y'all got that right? You can't build a relationship. How many people have had somebody tell you? I've had people tell me this. Christians. Well, I don't need to go to church or pray to know or have a relationship with God. That's a lie from the devil. It's a lie from the devil. Trying to keep them from the communion of the fellowship with one like-minded other brothers and sisters in Christ and to communicate verbally with God. Now, if somebody in here is thinking that, God's already give you what you need today. Amen? But there's more. Don't leave yet. Alright. Reflect on our daily activities. And to ask God for guidance. Daily. It expresses our faith in Him. It expresses our faith in Him. We, it's, a, it, it's an outward... When you start talking to God, you're expressing that faith in Him. If you don't ever talk to Him, well, maybe you don't know. You just, nah, maybe. Whatever. Hello. And of course, we pray to repent can't just think that. Yeah, God knows what we're thinking. He's also waiting for us to have the courage and the strength to say it. Right? All of us that are married or have significant others, you know, it's just, uh, they want to hear it. Well, what can I do to make them, what can I do that will make them feel, you ain't going to do nothing. It's over. Ask for forgiveness and be forgiven. Amen. Alright, the Word of God. Always got to have Scripture to back this stuff up. This ain't money's uh, theology here. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16-18. NIV says, Rejoice always. Rejoice when? Always. always. Pray when? <laughs> continually. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances. For this is what? God's will. Say God's will. God's will. This is God's will. I'm going to tell you what right now. Well, if it's God's will, that pretty much settles it for me. <laughs> That's pretty important. If it's God's will to pray when? Pray how long? Always. <laughs> Continually pray. <clears throat> he wants us to be in conversation with Him about everything. Yes. So that's your P, prayer. I'm going to tell you, if you add this PC, PMCS to your life today, and you, and, and you leave with the, with the attitude that I will make this my life starting today, this PMCS daily, your life's going to change. It's that powerful. It has to change. The second one, M, is meditate. Meditating on the Word of God. Meditate on the Word of God. Don't just read the Word of God. Just don't look for your, your answer. Like, say, you, you decide... A lot, a lot of people have the Bible where it says um, uh, prayer in bad times or prayer, uh, prayer in difficult times and prayers for this. And that's great. It's helping you. And you read it but if you don't meditate, it ain't going to do a whole lot for you. Right. Being in the Word is good. But the meditation, that's important. Meditation. Okay, it means contemplation. 
It means brooding over. It means to think about it. You're thinking about what you're... You've got to... You can't... You just... You can't just read it. You've got to sit. You might spend a whole week on one verse. Consideration of that Scripture. Reflection about. Deliberation over. These are all meditation. Okay? The benefits of meditating. There's seven up there. It's Mark 6, but there's, there's two at one of the places. Give you or bring you success. You will get success because of the meditation. God brings wisdom to us through that. You'll be strong and courageous. That's the two. Strong and courageous is not the same thing. We can be strong, but you've got to be courageous to step forward. Amen? It'll cause you to live a righteous way of life. Amen? A righteous way of life. Meditating will just cause that. Reading the Word doesn't change you as much as when you meditate on what you read. Make you fruitful. Oh boy. Make you fruitful. Well, faith without works is dead. There has to be fruit in our lives. And again, wisdom. I, I mentioned that. It brings you wisdom. And you, it'll make you see the glory of Jesus Christ. Sometimes we don't really see that manifestation because we're not meditating. And a lot of you all have talked about how you've read the Scripture and the Scripture touches you different than it ever did before. That's because you are pondering over what you read. You're meditating on it. You're spending some time. I told a, uh, somebody recently that, you know, we, we, we have a lot of Bible studies. Corporate Bible studies, but we have individual Bible studies. Online Bible studies that you can do in the MAS uh, mile marker Bible study. And I told one young lady, I told her, I said, you're going way too fast. I said, you can't go that fast. I don't care if you take a week per chapter. Meditate, ponder, evaluate. Allow it to spend some time and soak in. Amen? And look, Psalm 1-2. Scripture again. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in it doth he meditate day and night. Amen? He meditates how often? Day and night. So God wants us to pray continuously. And He wants to meditate, as to meditate on the Word of God continuously, right? This is in the Word. It's not Monty's idea here. This is the PMCS God gave me, but this is prayer meditation. Okay. Now this next one is, um, is communion. C stands for communion. And I, when I say communion, most of y'all probably thought, you know, the sacraments, the blood, the flesh... You know, the grape juice, the wafer. But that's not what I'm talking about. Communion is fellowship. See, it's an exchange. Communion definition is this. The sharing and exchanging of, ex of, of intimate thoughts and feelings, especially when exchange is on a mental or spiritual level. And when it's on a mental or spiritual level, this is necessary. It's essential for growth. Back to our conversations. Prayer is communicating... Communion is intimate communicating. Fellowship. So, you, 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 you couples, okay, you can talk to each other, but if you don't commune with each other, you still ain't growing with each other. Brothers and sisters in Christ, we can talk to each other, but if we don't commune with one another and fellowship with one another, we can't grow together. Amen? Communion or fellowship with who? Well, of course God first, right? but also with one another. With one another. Not just communion with God. So prayer, meditation, and communion. Amen? C is communion with God and everybody else. And you're like, well, I can see it with God, but do I really have to get... Lots of people say, I don't have to go to church to be a Christian. I don't have to go and fellowship with all these other people. All these uh, hypocrites. You know? Amen? And I told somebody the other day, I said, well, you ought to come and visit our church. I said, we got some really like-minded brothers and sisters here, but you'll find hypocrites too. And they're just like, whoa, the preacher said that? Yeah, it's the truth. Anyway, all right. Look, First John 1, 5 through 7. This is the scripture, okay? This backs this up about fellowship with one another. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light. Amen? Amen. And in him is what? No darkness at all. Amen? If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we, we lie and do not the truth. It's the truth. It's the Word of God. But if we walk in the light, this is the part, but if we walk in the light, and He is in the light, He, we have fellowship, what? One another. That's you and me, guys. 
We have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Amen. It's all put together here, you see, with the prayer. Unceasing. Constantly. Prayer. You're meditating day and night on the word. Your communion with one another and God. You can't help but grow. And you can't help but see. Others can't help but see that you are washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. Just because of what's going on. How many, I mean, so many of you already have experienced this. Somebody has seen what's going on with you when you're in a group of people. And they're like, I've got to have what they got. I've got to find out what they're doing. And you, and you get to introduce them to Jesus Christ. Amen? Glory to God. <coughs> S. <laughs> service. Our service to God. Amen? Again, faith without works is dead. Your service to the Lord. Our fruit is our service. Okay, what, what, what others see of us. Amen? And, and the Word even lets us know. We know that by their fruits ye shall know them. Right? We know this. It, you can tell people. It, people can say all they want to do and act all they want to do on a Sunday, but when you see them Tuesday at Walmart, upset and acting like something they shouldn't be, you see their fruit. Hello. Sometimes you can come out. Tammy and I are going to Pentecostal church one time, and this like the second or third person that's in charge of that church because of their stature and how long they'd been there, a God-fearing woman was a screamer! They ain't even got out of the parking lot yet. No one of them kids are always like this. I'm just saying, you are known by your fruit. Amen? Well, the Word of God, again, this is the last one, service. Okay, Matthew seven fifteen through 20. Beware of the false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Of course not. Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. And the last verse for that is, Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. We are known by our fruit, brothers and sisters, by our service of what we do. God bless you. God bless you. That is the message. PMCS. And, and, and in closing, my, my remarks are pretty simple, okay? I pray that you're taking this home with you to apply it because I know it had to touch you. If you came, exi if you came expected, it, it, you're taking something back. And it may be all of them. You'd be like, wow, boy, I fall short in this one. I fall short in that one. But there's one, one in particular that's hit everybody for sure, okay? And, and I'm believing and I'm claiming I, I'm going to pray that God is going to touch each and one, every one of us to apply PMCS to our spiritual lives starting today. And that we pray more. Some of us don't pray at all. I'm serious. I know there's some sitting here right now that won't try to get them to pray over a meal and they're like, uh, well, oh shucks. <laughs> Hello? God wants to hear you. It's an expression of your faith to Him. And if you're afraid to speak out, then you must not have much faith. Hello? I'm just saying it like it is. Amen? So I'm praying that for those of you that needed to hear that today, that you start praying more. And some of us that pray now need to pray more intimately. Amen. I also pray that God brings a desire on you to spend more time in meditation. In meditation. Amen. In the Word. I, I spoke with a, a couple within the last week or so and I told them, I said, you know, they, they, there's, there's some storms going on in our life. And I said, look, you need to pray and you need to meditate on the Word together. 15 minutes a day. I said, if you'll spend 15... I, I know that God's going to touch you during those 15 minutes. If you'll just make a commitment to spend 15 minutes, it's going to start being longer. You'll be like, wow, an hour went by. Why? Because the Holy Spirit got involved, man. But if you'll just commit yourself to spending 15 minutes in the Word of God with each other, your storms are going to start dissipating. It has to. Prayer, meditation, and I pray for communion. So many of us don't do the communion. That's where you share that intimate feeling with God. You share those intimate feelings on a spiritual note with one another. 
Right? That's how you grow. And of course our service. And I, I have to touch on service a little bit. Because sometimes with service, we, we get involved, we, we, we get so wrapped around how much we're doing and what somebody else is not doing with us. I, I almost, it's not weekly anymore, praise God, but still, it's almost every other week. Someone's got to make the comment that I just wish somebody would do something like I'm doing. That's not what it's about. See, what it's about is not what you're doing or how much you're doing, but are you doing what God wants you to do? Amen. Are you doing what God wants you to do? That Bible stu study hit on it pretty hard, didn't it? God's, God's got something for each and every one of us here to do. So go do it. There's some people in here right now that don't participate in hardly anything with the church, but I know what they're doing, found out by accident, and some of them was like, you're not supposed to know about that. And I said, well, I, your secret's good with me. Especially after my stroke. I can't even remember to tell my wife anymore. <laughs> Amen. But I'm just saying, be doing what God wants you to do for your service. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you again for a short but powerful message. Lord, I'm praying, I'm believing, I'm, I, I'm expecting, Lord, right now that each and every one of us has changed just by what you provided today in this short message, but that we're all leaving motivated to, to that you help us lift up our prayer life better. For those of us that don't, we start. And for those of us that do, it's more intimate. And Lord, that you... you you, you, you stir us up to where when we read, we can't help but start meditating. Lord, I pray that you help us meditate. We ponder. We reflect. We apply the Word of God, your living Word, to our lives and our situations. And Lord, I, the communion, Lord, I just pray right now that you stir us up to where we want to be more intimate with you and share things with you that we just don't want to say. Even though you know all things, that we verbally open up in our private of, of our prayer closet with you. And then that we open up with one another with the, the spiritual intimacy that we have for you with each other. That's what lifts us up. And finally, Lord, everybody in here has a purpose. Not just spreading the Word of God, but a specific thing you want us to do in a specific way. And I pray right now, Lord, you touch each and every one of us that we, we receive confirmation today. Today. Either it's something you've showed us before that you want us to continue to do, to, that we haven't never started, or to continue to do something that we, we are doing. Give us confirmation, Lord. We ask for all of this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Let's stand to be dismissed. and. Uh